Aloha. It's not that I have anything specifically against the rhombus. Let me tell you, from the age of six, second grade through ninth grade, every single year, I was taught what a rhombus is. So I was excited upon my graduation from high school to use this knowledge, probably on a daily basis, since it was so emphasized in my education, and that hasn't happened. As a matter of fact, it's never been the answer to a single question I've ever had in the 36 years since learning the rhombus. So unlike this adorable but complicated infographic, the math program I've created is real simple. It's called Gone Mathin. The idea is simple. When we're doing math, you probably won't find us in our classroom. We're outside. We're doing stuff. We're making things. Okay. So let's talk about the current context of math instruction in the United States right now. I believe this is the current context. And it's, you know, if we really break it down, what are we trying to get kids to do so often? Fill in the right, it has nothing to do with math. It's fill in the right bubble on a certain day of the year. That's the context. I believe this should be the context of math instruction all over the world. I don't want you to think for a second that I've invented anything. I believe all I'm doing is recycling the way math used to be taught when we used words like apprenticeship and little red schoolhouse. So tell, let me tell you what I've done. I've taken every single piece of the fourth grade curriculum and embedded every skill into at least two projects that the students create. A concrete example of that would be angles. Fourth graders are expected to know how to measure, create, and identify angles. So the context where I teach angles is paper airplanes. The students make, first, they make awesome paper airplanes. And then they reverse engineer them so someone else could build them uh, just from text, measuring angles. The other way we do it is we make a scaled model of our campus chapel, which if you know this campus, it has a very unique uh, roof with very funky angles to it. So what we would put on a website would be something like project-based purpose, utilizing empathy. Let me translate that for you. It's hands-on challenges with real clients, and I cannot emphasize real clients and empathy. When the, when the students are their own clients, and we are our own clients, so easy, it's so easy to change the parameters. When you have someone else that you're working for or working towards, uh, it, it's much better for the students. And then the outcome is making stuff and sharing it out. And we go through this design thinking process. The biorhythm of this project that I'm going to show you next, I want you to notice the relationship between fun and learning. In the perfect world, I believe school should be 51% fun and 49% learning. Okay? So let me take you through this. So this is a design thinking challenge, project-based, math-based challenge. The first step is to accept the challenge, design a swimming pool for a client. I am the client. When I'm the client, it really means my kids, Leia and Woody, are the real clients to this. Now, I know you're wondering, where is his beautiful wife in this scenario? Well, before my beautiful wife insists before we build a pretend swimming pool, we remodel her kitchen. <laughs> so she has all the math uh, down, too. She's, she's got it right. OK, so for second step, the kids come up with questions. Nine and 10-year-olds, you think they have a problem coming up with questions? That's all they do is ask questions. So they come up with these questions. Fresh water, salt water, how big is your pool? How much water? They always ask, is someone going to pee in your pool? And I always say, for sure, someone is going to be peeing. Plan on it, OK? So it's real important. And now we bring the clients in okay, for an actual client meeting. This is Woody. He doesn't swim. He's 36 inches tall. Does that define a parameter of this pool? You bet it does. My daughter wants to snorkel. Well, what, what depths? What depths, if you wanted to practice snorkeling, what depths would you build a pool? Now me, I want to jump off the roof every morning and dive in the pool. And I'm six foot two inches of pure muscle, so how, how deep does that have to be? I don't know, probably 10 to 15 feet, okay? So the criteria, now remember where the criteria is coming from. So often we give the kids criteria. The criteria has come from the kids' questions, and that's a big paradigm shift, okay? Now, we know what the questions are going to end up to be, but the fact that they come, the criteria comes from students is real important. So we want it between 6,000 and 8,500 cubic feet, surrounding three sides of my home. Here's the size of my home, three depths that we talked about, and here's kind of a graphic of what it looks like from underneath in Google SketchUp, so you can get an idea. And the last one is hot tub optional, if you want, okay? 
Now, at this point in the year, the kids have experience with, with volume. We've already measured the volume of the Punahou pool. We've already done lots of math building up to this in other projects. Now, the next step in the de design thinking process is brainstorming. This is where the kids get to dream big, wild ideas. They put stickies all over the room. It's crazy. The next step is bucketing, where they really they try and find hot spots. What resonates? What are the ideas that we're going to move forward with? Next step is prototyping. Okay? And here you see Yuli doing this push-pull to try and get about 7,000 cubic feet of water. And yes, he's drawing on his desk. Through a happy accident here, the, <coughs> our desks got repainted with a type of paint that takes whiteboard marker. And the kids love drawing on their desks. Okay, so here's some examples of student work. And what I want you to notice is there's two different types of designs. Engineering designs that have specific dimensions and architectural designs that, that show the aesthetics. Notice the relationship between creativity and math. And what's so fascinating in these projects is the more, the, creative, the more creativity the kids use, the harder the math becomes. And when you think about that, who do they get mad at? Not me. <laughs> they get mad at themselves for having great ideas, but they don't get mad at themselves. Let me show you this video, but I know I'm In the bowl, I have to make three different depths. One for Woody to play in, one for Leia to snorkel in, and one for Mr. Shrango to jump off the roof and land in. I also added a little island with a bridge so you don't have to swim to it. The island also has a palm tree. Knowing that Mr. Schwingo wants to dive off the roof into the pool, I made him a little platform so he won't slide off. <laughs> Lastly, I made a little patio which I think has a nice view. So that concludes this. I hope you enjoyed watching. Bye! Adorable, isn't it? I know, I love it. All right. A nine-year-old made that. It's astonishing. It's scaled. It's based on his own ideas. And think of the math that went into this. It's pretty incredible. So in this program, it is also crucial that students are constantly making vocational connections. Are you being a plumber? Or are you being an architect? Or are you being a landscape engineer? And for years in America, we've gotten this wrong and put vocational schools on different campuses. When we really, when we think about it, we know it should all be in one place because the world operates in one place. So what does this mean in the classroom again? Well, this is my classroom. And the point of this is we should put education publishers out of business. We should not be buying math tools from education publishers. We should be going to Home Depot for our tools. Yeah. Okay? Have you ever used a tiny little <laughs> protractor in real life? <laughs> Probably not. Okay? But we expect, we expect kids to do this crazy stuff with these little tools. So the last step of the design thinking process is storytelling, and that is sharing out your ideas. Okay? And you language arts teachers and social studies teachers, you know how important this could be. This is that communication, collaboration, communication part of the design thinking process. So one of the questions is, how do we assess this? Can we assess this? Yes, we can. And it's real client-based. Did they meet the criteria? We set the criteria. Did they meet the criteria of the challenge? Now, this young man here. I thought when he turned this in, I thought he didn't get it. I thought he either couldn't orient it thing or he did the last minute thought. He said, no, Mr. Schwingel, this here is your hot tub that is heated by the core of the earth. <laughs> A plus. <laughs> Other projects I'll share with you. We asked the kids to redesign the toilet every year in fourth grade. We study the toilet extensively in my class because, you want to know why? Because we use the toilet extensively. When we think about the ignorance of the average American on something we sit on three to seven times a day, it's, it's unbelievable to me. So we always, the students always come up with this gray water uh, solution and, and this feeds on the idea of how ridiculous it is that we use pure drinking water in our toilets. Okay, so we have students thinking of this. Another student wanted to solve that 
problem. A lot of us have, a lot of us 42 year old men have several times a night. You have the choice of either blindly fumbling for the toilet or turning on the bathroom light and getting bl blinded like a vampire in the sunlight. So she came up with the glow in the dark toilet. <laughs> At $999, prices me out of the toilet market a bit. But uh, someday we could bring that price down. This next student really empathized and wanted to solve the problem of boredom on the toilet. So he created an online gaming community where you poop against other toilet users <laughs> to gather points. It's wonderful, wonderful idea. Okay, so right now, this week in my class, the students are using empathy. What is the memento that they, is it trophies? Is it their grandmother's medicine? And they're engineering memento caddies. They're using empathy and engineering and a thousands of dollars. We have a great milling machine called the Tubot that cuts it out of foam and paints it later. And the kids are making customized memento caddies. Think of the math. If this, if your son in graduate school <laughs> said, this is what I did, you'd go, yeah, that's about right. These are fourth graders doing this. This is unbelievable. And it is not beyond them. So what do we see here? We see high interest and curricular connections. And who already agrees with me on this? Oh, well, I'm not asking. I know you all agree with me on this. No, who out there already agrees with me? Common Core uh, curriculum, uh, what they're doing is they're moving away from fiction reading into nonfiction reading. And I've coined a phrase in my classroom, which is more pipe wrenches, fewer unicorns. And when we think about what does that mean? Let's move towards practical stuff in the classroom. Who else agrees with me on this? President Obama talked about this in his State of the Union speech. Talked about the importance of vocational schooling. Brain research. Every bit of brain research you hear about in the next 10 years, I guarantee will point towards project-based learning. Practical, out of your seat learning. Industry, industry is clamoring. All we hear them do nowadays is complain about not being able to find hireable employees. And interestingly, two days ago, two days ago, the state of Texas announced they may have overdone the bubble testing. They are walking back. The state of Texas, who led, who pioneered this ridiculous testing movement, for good reasons, I will say. I think they had good intentions, but even they are walking this back. Okay, and for the record, I might be wildly wrong about the rhombus. I'm sure, probably tomorrow after this speech, I'm going to spring a leak in my pipes at home, and I'm going to yell, get me a rhombus! I'm not sure, okay? I doubt it'll happen. But the point is, let's keep moving forward with our thoughts, and let's go mathin'. Thank you very much.